Another source of simple harmonic motion is an oscillating spring. If I hang a mass at the end of the spring, then it's going to convert stored potential energy into kinetic energy. Back and forth, it stretches and compresses the spring. The period of the simple harmonic motion is another form of a, uh, it's a very similar formula to a bat of a pendulum. So let's figure out how to do an oscillating spring. Got to remember that, let's see, springs. To stretch a spring, as I stretch a spring, it takes more force to stretch it further and further. So the force required to stretch a spring is equal to Hooke's law constant, this K, times the displacement from equilibrium, from where it's not stretched or compressed. So F is the force stretching or compressing. K is the spring constant. And D is the displacement. And the spring constant, so I'll see that's force, so that's going to be like pounds per inch or pounds per foot or newtons per centimeter, units like that. So it'll all work out. Now, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root. Now, gravity isn't the deal. It's the mass divided by the spring constant. If it's a tighter spring, it's going to have a higher spring can constant and the period is going to be shorter. It's going to bounce quicker. If it's, a, if it's got a lower spring constant, it's going to be a more lax spring. It's going to take longer. The period will go up. Smaller mass. Smaller mass is easy to move back and forth, so smaller period. Bigger mass, longer period. So let's try this. Let's do an example. And first we'll calculate the spring constant of this spring, and then we'll figure out its period of oscillation. So, first off, right now the end is hanging at, uh, oh, let's see, centimeters. 39.0 centimeters. I'm gonna stick, 500 grams on here, and it's going to stretch it to 53. 53 minus 39, that's 14 centimeters. So here we go, the displacement. Displacement is 14 centimeters. And uh, let's see, the force is, well, the mass is 500 grams. You better get to that. Calculating time. I'll get this into meters. Uh, 14 centimeters, there's one meter per 100 centimeters. Centimeters cancel, that's 0 0.14. Meters. 500 grams, we need that in kilograms. There's, uh, there's one kilogram for every thousand grams. That's uh, 0 0.500. Actually, I measure that to three sig figs. I'll go with that. 1.40. 0. 0. 0.500 kilograms. Now, the force is the weight, and the weight is the product of the mass and how hard gravity is pulling it down. So that's going to be 0 0.500 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of gravity at sea level, which is uh, 4.9 meters per second squared. There's the force. Now I want to know what's the spring constant? Force is the spring constant times the displacement. So the spring constant is just the force divided by the displacement. I just rewrote the equation to solve the spring constant. And that's going to be equal to 4.90 meters per second squared over 0 
meters, which is going to be like, I don't know, 35 or so. Let's try it. Well, it's going to be exactly 35.0. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be, let's see, the meters cancel. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, excuse me, I messed up here. Right, I didn't multiply the kilograms. I've got kilogram meters per second squared. That's the same as 4.90 newtons. So I'll call that newtons. <sighs> that helps out. Because I need uh, newtons per meter. Man, treat your units just like numbers because they'll save your butt. Can you say butt on YouTube? Hey, okay. So now we know the spring constant. Now we can figure out the period of oscillation for for any mass. I could put that half a kilogram back on. Or I could put any mass. Now that I know the spring constant, it doesn't matter. So let me put, uh, let me add another half a kilo onto the fire here. So now i got a kilogram of mass hanging here. And it's got a certain certain frequency, a certain period of oscillation. So let's calculate it first, and then what we'll do is we'll time it. Let's say uh, finding the spring constant was the first part. And B, I have this new mass of, uh, well, it's a kilogram. And I want to know what's the period of oscillation. And the period of oscillation is 2 pi times the mass divided by the spring constant. So, not the old mass that we determined the spring constant from, but a new one. And so we're going to get 2 pi times the square root of 1.0 kilograms divided by 35 newtons per meter. Man, that's going to be tough. I'm going to write this out. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and it's newtons per meter, so that's over meters. Meters will cancel, kilograms will cancel. I'll have one over one over second squared. Oh, that's second squared. But I'm taking the square root of it, so it'll just be seconds. So that's good. So the answer we get is. six seconds. And uh, let's see what the frequency is. Well, the frequency is just one over the period, which is one over 1.06 seconds, and that's actually at seconds per cycle. You don't have to say that, but it is the time for one cycle. And when I flip it over, I get cycles per second, which just hurts. So that'll give me 0 0.942 cycles per second. Flip that over, and that's a hertz. Now, let's see if that agrees with what we see. We'll go with the number of cycles and the time it takes. And I'll just do 10 again. Let's see how long it takes to do. So I've got 10 cycles, time is 13, I'm going to go 13.9 seconds. My reaction is not going to be that good. And I want to know what the frequency is, measure. The frequency is the number of cycles over the time. You know, if you tried to just measure one period, you're not going to get that accurate an answer because of the reflexes. So this is 10 cycles for 13.9 seconds. Well, that's not going to be very close to this one.
0.719. So it's got a shorter frequency. That means it's got a longer period. Now, here's why it's got a longer period than what I calculated. The period is 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring constant. And the mass of the system is actually greater. And so the period is a little longer than I calculate. And the reason is this. This is a heavy spring. So there's mass in the spring that we just didn't account for. But other than that, the equations work pretty well. So these are two good examples of simple harmonic motion.